Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another another system. Um, we picked up this box a couple of weeks ago and uh, had a, a person who contacted me on one of my ads on Virage Sale saying, hey, I got an old laptop here. If you're interested, you can come and, and, and pick it up. Uh, the only thing they asked for was if I could get any files off it that I do so. Um, had a little bit of a challenge with that. Uh, the system itself was in really bad shape. Um, it's a was had a Windows XP um, preload on it, and um, yeah, it was it was in bad shape. Um, so I had tried to get into it to do a um, download of the files onto a USB key. It just kept stalling out. Um, I tried running. Um, uh, uh, what is it? G parted uh, off of a uh, to load it off of a, my like emergency boot CD boot disk. I've got an ultimate boot CD on like on a USB key. Um, it just wouldn't go at all. Or sorry, no, I know it wouldn't go at all. It wouldn't boot. It wouldn't boot from a USB key. That was the problem. <laughs> so I burned. I burned ultimate boot CD onto a onto a a, a CD. <laughs> And got it up and running, running on a live CD, and it just wouldn't go at all. It just would not do it. So I ended up pulling, I ended up pulling the drive out of the laptop, and I um, installed it into another system, uh, 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 an old, another ThinkPad, older ThinkPad that I've got, and that ThinkPad will boot properly. So I ran Gparted on that. And, and also, uh, once I had that running, I went and installed uh, an external SATA hard drive, and I just did a disk-to-disk -disk transfer um, to that SATA hard drive. And then once I had that on the SATA hard drive, I could pull that on my main machine onto a USB key, and that USB key I'm going to go and drop off at their house, so they have their... 26 gig worth of photos and videos and all sorts of other stuff that they had on this system that they would have otherwise lost. So quite an experience, um, you know, thinking you've got to, you know, there's no necessarily one stop shop that you're just going to be able to do a quick image of something because if the system itself is being naughty or not capable of handling some of the more modern ways of transferring things, it's just not going to work. But we got that done. I digress. Important, I like to tell the history of these systems. So, um, here is this box, as you can see. It is a Sony VAIO. We'll flip it over here and you can see the nice, lovely naming there. It's a hard plastic shell, so it's a little bit scratchy uh, in terms of its uh, condition. Uh, but you can see here is the rear, um, exhaust fan, battery. We've got a, um, a uh, CD-ROM DVD drive here, modem and Ethernet, Kensington lock. Uh, front here we've got the lock panel to open up the screen. Uh, we've got some indicator lights, a Wi-Fi hard on off, and then uh, audio ports. And then around the side here we've got a, um, I'm guessing this is a, I think this is a PCMCA card slot. Um, this looks like it might be like a micro fire wire. And then we've got this magic gate cover, which I think has, this was a custom form factor here that Sony had their own like memory cards that would have fit inside this, um, this slot. Two USB ports, VGA, and then power. Uh, the battery holds still a little bit of a charge, uh, but not a not a lot, um, which is pretty good for a system that's pretty old. Uh, and then we take a look at the inside here. Um, screen is nothing to scream at. Um, here's the keyboard here, touchpad, pretty cheap touchpad, and not too enjoyable keys to key to key press. Um, power button and speakers, some indicator lights. This keyboard uh, is actually not discolored. <laughs> Very strange. I took a look at a lot of online pictures of this system to confirm, but this is not actually discolored. This is the actual design of this particular models of Sony VAIOs. This VGN-FS980. Uh, and there was a number of VAIO models that were this type of case design. It's very strange. Very strange. And then screen-wise, it's just, uh, I think this is a 12, a 13, 13 inch screen. Um, and it's only like uh, 1200 by 800 um, resolution, so it's not, and again, not anything to to uh, write home about. So we'll get this um, we'll get this plugged in. I'm gonna plug in our connections, 
and we will uh, we'll get booted up here in a second. We'll see what happens. A nice sound, a sound effect when the system boots up. And as you can see here, we will be booting into Windows 10. That's right. So we got this system up and running with Windows 10. Um, uh, luckily enough, <laughs> the uh, uh, the system was capable of 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 running Windows. Uh, you'll see, um, you know, it's not going to run Windows very well. Uh, <laughs> and we did have a bit of a challenge. So this is, you know, pretty early on in terms of uh, execute bit um, being being available. Um, I'm pretty sure this processor actually doesn't even have 64-bit instructions, so we installed um, a 32-bit uh, Windows OS. Uh, we're going to ask me to do this later because I know that we were having troubles doing this um, doing this install. Okay, so let's take a look at the, the system here um, as it's uh, doing something. It's doing something. Checking something, reading something. Um, we'll open up hardware info here and take a look at the specs the specs and you can see how we barely get <laughs> we barely get into the uh into the windows 10 category on uh on this system so as i mentioned the processor here it does have the uh necessary um uh, processor features required to be able to operate in a um in this environment Pentium M740. This is a single core, single thread processor, uh, and it is running at a maximum of 1.7 gig. So it is not a fast system at all. Uh, the other challenge that exists within this system is the fact that you only have a total of two gig worth of memory in this system maximum. Uh, I tried uh, with a two gig module and a one gig module installed wouldn't work. I tried with a two gig module on its own, it would work. And I tried with um, two one gig modules, which I have installed in here now and it works. So the, the system, I guess it's BIOS locked or something that it will not accept more than two gig of memory. Um, I did a fair amount of searching on the uh, on the internet for um, uh, possible BIOS updates. I found one BIOS update that was posted on one of those shady driver uh, websites, um, but the information on what the BIOS update did had nothing to do with memory functionality. It was like external graphics support or something, so I didn't bother trying it. Um, you know, it, on the risk that it would do something horrible to the system since it wasn't actually coming from Sony's website, of which there was like zero support information on their site uh, on the product or any kinds of drivers. So it is what it is. Um, the other challenge that we had on this one was actually getting Windows to update to the latest version. So it's 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 on version 1607 right now. Um, I tried doing the install again, couldn't boot off of a USB key, had to use uh, installation DVDs. I couldn't even get the most current um, I think it's 1903. No, I think the oldest one that I had already burned was 1809. Um, and none of them would actually run the installation, even like the 32 bit mode. So I was able to go and, um, uh, there was a website online and I'll link it in the, uh, description on the video, um, where you can go and look up and find older versions of windows 10. So I downloaded 1607 and burned it to a CD. Uh, and installed, or burned to a DVD, sorry, and installed that, um, and that worked, and it's gotten a couple of updates going, but it's trying to update to, I think, 1809, and it just keeps, like, locking and crashing, and so I'm thinking that maybe there's some kind of instructions, maybe some of the AVX instructions that were added to Windows 10 in later versions, and they're just not happy when they don't see that, uh, showing up in the processor and as a result it can't complete the update so i mean i think i'm okay with sending this system out for someone to use because it's still able to work i mean it's still safe enough i think from a from a 
security perspective that it can that it can run properly um, without risking exposure. Um, but obviously, it's not it, you know that's going to be a little bit of a, a hang up. So it's not going to have as long as a life as something that maybe has those extra instructions. But regardless, the system still works. Um, not great, not fast. Um, it runs pretty slow. The 75 gig hard drive is definitely a lot of room on the system, um, but you can see how much it struggles to be able to run or do anything when we're trying to load something up. Um, also, the small resolution on the screen is not great either. This 1200 by 800 resolution really doesn't feel good. Um, uh, it, it really feels like a low resolution um, uh, uh, screen, but you can see here, I'm not even going to bother trying to run the, uh, the old YouTube video because it is just absolutely terrible in terms of how slow it's running, um, for any of this type of stuff. So definitely for whoever this goes to, um, you know, hopefully it's going to be, you know, uh, on the younger side of the kid who's going to be making use of this, um, and doesn't need a lot of performance, uh, cause they're not going to get a ton out of it, but at least, Hey, it's running windows 10 they're going to be up to date, safe and secure to be able to go online and do some browsing, do some internet email, um, and and that type of uh, that type of activity. Um, you know, minus the multimedia, they should be able to do fine. Google Classroom work, um, you know, should be should be perfectly acceptable. And that's really the goal of you know getting a system like this back up and running. Uh, give it a year, uh, in, you know, one more year of life even is enough for it to to continue to. Uh, to help somebody out and also, you know, saving someone's files that they can be able to, you know, keep those memories going um, and we'll get those dropped off to them in the next week or so. So that's it. Again, hope you enjoy the videos here that we take a look, uh, take a look at getting some of these systems restored and in usable shape. Um, if you had one of these Sony Vios, this model or, or any of the other models of this style, happy to, you know, get any stories or feedback you have on them um, to, uh, to share as well. I uh, really like to get the conversation started. And uh, as always, you know, thanks very much for taking time out of your day to, uh, to um, you know, see what I'm sharing with you. And hope to see you uh, in the comments again in this and future videos. In the meantime, hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy. And we'll catch you in the next one.